And hi, I'm Mary Nan Mallory, the president of uh, the American Board of Emergency Medicine and uh, a practicing emergency physician in Louisville, Kentucky. And I wanted to welcome you all to ABEM's presentation on uh, continuing certification changes. And with me today is Marianne Gaucher Hill calling in from California. Hey, Marianne. Hi everyone, uh, welcome. Thanks for joining us today so we can discuss this important topic to all of us. Um, my name is Dr. Marianne Gaucher Hill. I'm a practicing emergency physician in Los Angeles, California. And I am president elect of uh, the American Board of Emergency Medicine. Welcome. We have a presentation for you today that includes um, a video, uh, a slide deck, and um, during the slide deck, we actually have a few QR codes that we'd love for you to get your cell phones ready uh, to, um, to um, you know, to click on so you can connect to the information that we're providing. And then that will be, that will be followed by a moderated uh, Q&A session. Our AVM staff will help us moderate. And we're really looking forward to passing on information to you that's vital and important to your continuing certification and kind of filling in some of the blanks uh, and answering some of the questions that you um, may have. We have had some questions sent in earlier and those have also informed uh, some of the, the answers that we provided today. The purpose of our talk today is to review the recent changes to certification and specifically continuing certification. So we'll talk about the My MCERT uh, process. We'll talk about the online concert examination. We'll talk about the cycle links. And as I mentioned, they will then have an FAQ. Here's a video. I hope it's informative.
Thanks so much for teeing that up, AJ. And now that we've, now that we've all gotten a chance to preview uh, the overview um, about my MSERT, let's focus on a few details. Uh, so I'm gonna uh, turn to Marianne and ask her to uh, move through the slide. Thanks, Mary Nan. Uh, we're pretty excited about the rollout of my MCERT. Uh, it's really a formative versus a summative focus. As you can see, we've already uh, started the pilot project and we should have um, modules ready for people to engage in my MCERT as part of their continuing certification program in spring of 2021. It's online open book uh, each five years um, for your five year cycle you would successfully complete four modules. Anyway, the other thing that it has is um, the ability, once you take it, if indeed there uh, is any issues and you need to retake an, uh, a module, you can do that immediately. So it's, it's really convenient and I think a lot more relevant uh, based on our practice. Thanks, Thanks. Marianne. Marianne's been with the development of the My MCERT uh, project since the very beginning, and the board and the diplomates uh, are really grateful for that work, Marianne. Thank you. Um, we, uh, ABIM launched the MyMCERT pilot, or the first administration of MyMCERT, on October 6th, and in the three-month pilot, that means we're currently in the middle of the pilot, we have about 1,200 participants, um, and they are moving through three available modules. The first three modules are abdominopelvic, abnormal vital signs, and shock, and trauma and bleeding. We've gotten some feedback uh, regarding the pilot and what we know is that um, our uh, pilot participants, all who are current diplomates, really, really uh, feel like, um, like these, um, these modules are highly relevant to their clinical practice. And as you can see by the topics uh, one through eight, uh, with the uh, remaining eight to be developed um, in the next few months um, by our developers, our test developers. Um, these are presentation-based um, that, you know, th these are issues and topics that we all see every day in the emergency department. Um, this is uh, some part walk around knowledge uh, some part um, learning, uh, assessment for learning. And so it, it's really exciting um, that we're going to be able to provide um, our diplomates and provide ourselves with um, this modular-based um, opportunity. If you guys want to um, point your phones, you know, at the QR code, it will take you right to the website so you can get more information about the, the modules. So let's take a minute and uh, pause and allow people to do that. All right, so I hope you guys have been pointed right to the website and understand that. So what's the other 20%? And the other 20% is something new, uh, really new to us, and that is the area of key advances. Marianne, why don't you talk about the key advances? Okay, thanks, Marianne. I, I think what's exciting about this is the ability to take new information that comes to us and synthesize it and provided in abstracts uh, to our emergency physicians that are going through the recertification process. So those things are practice advances and uh, clinical policy alert. Uh, uh, an example of clinical policy alert might be the uh, critical management of seizures in the emergency department that uh, ASEP or others uh, will put out. And then suggestions from the literatures that may be new, exciting, randomized trials or things that might suggest a, a change in our practice. And the key advances, as was um, stated by Mary Nana, are accompanied by these brief summaries or synopses, and you can get to them uh, through the QR code, or if you go on the ABAM website, uh, essentially go to the MyAM cert, and there's a key advance tab there, um, section for you. And the synopses are already available on the website, and you can have those available to you uh, when you, you take the MyAM cert modules. Thanks, Mary Nan. 
So I hope you all have had a chance to um, hit the website with the QR code. Um, let's pivot now to um, a broader discussion about what the board has done um, in order to support our diplomates and our residents um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. One of the early things we did um, in the pandemic was to make a decision to protect the eligibility for residents who may be affected by a COVID illness or COVID quarantine. Most of us remember that while you're in residency, you do have to uh, complete a certain number of weeks of training at each level. And we wanted to make sure that um, our residents on the front line were not being punished, so to speak, for, um, for their service and for issues beyond their control regarding uh, quarantine. And, and so this provides uh, an additional week um, of, of time and, and in conjunction with also a very recent update to the medical leave and maternity leave policy during residency training. Um, there, uh, there are several more weeks available to program directors uh, to, to offer residents uh, to be away from training for various and sundry reasons without extending uh, past the June 30th residency graduation time, as long as these residents in the eyes of their faculty and program director have met the competencies required for graduation. For our diplomates, we've also extended the deadlines for physicians whose certifications end this year. And so for the 2020 cadre, you will have until the middle of next year to complete all your continuous certification requirements. And you will still wind up with a 2020 end date and a January 1st, 2021 certificate launch. Certificate date, excuse me. I don't know if you guys can hear me, but I just got kicked off. I'm so sorry, Marianne, if you're there, do you want to take over? Okay. Yeah, thank you. I was just trying to see. Um, <laughs> in terms of the concert, I can, uh, I can hear you, though. Um, the concert exam, as you know, the uh, Pearson Views uh, Center is temporarily closed. And so we had to pivot, uh, just like everybody's pivoting uh, during COVID, to try to meet the needs of our um, of our physicians who are going through either certification or uh, continuing certification processes. So it's, it's, it's really been uh, interesting, as I think you all know, I've been on about 5 billion Zoom meetings at this point. <laughs> there are, um, so there are over 3,000 or so physicians needed to recertify in 2020. And so because no Pearson View, uh, we, said, well, what are we gonna do? People are under stress. Um, let's go ahead and do it online, open book, concert exam. So it was remote, convenient and available uh, to them. And they can use the resources that they normally use uh, in, the, in the emergency department, including uh, up to date. Next slide. Should I keep going, yeah, Marianne? Go ahead, go ahead, ahead and finish this up, Marianne. Okay. okay. So um, in terms of uh, the exam, uh, the, as you know, the uh, concert exam was more of a um, summative emphasis uh, when it was an open book, but we felt at this point, since uh, we are moving toward a more formative continuing uh, certification process, uh, that the concert exam would be delivered in this way. And the first administration was in July. As you can see, there were over 1,200 test takers and we got a lot of positive feedback about the ability to do this and um, to, to take it at home. Uh, they, uh, as with everything, uh, 
internet wise, you can tell uh, there's <laughs> always uh, challenges, right? And um, so there was a little bit of a challenge, but other than that, I think it was a pretty successful launch. The uh, concert exam itself will end at the end of 2022, and there'll be uh, two more administrations, 2021, and then two in 2022. Next slide. Um, I do want to just emphasize that, um, you know, the concert will be available uh, four more times, right? So, Marianne, you said that we're um, offering it twice a year. Um, now we started that um, already, and we'll continue that until... Um, the concert uh, sunsets. So let's transition to the five-year certification cycle transition. And beginning in 2021, all cer certificates that ABIM issues will be for five years. And, and this has caused a, a bit of an, we'll say, uproar amongst some of us. And, and in reality, what we know um, as a board through the data uh, of monitoring our emergency, uh, diplom emergency medicine diplomates for many, many years, is that 85% um, of us actually complete our five-year requirements now within five years. So for 85% of us, this is not going to be that different. The end date on your certificate will be different, but actually you're still doing essentially four out of five activities and an improvement in medical practice activity and maintaining your licensure um, in the same um, cycle that you have been um, doing it since we initiated these 10-year certification cycle requirements. We do wanna emphasize that there's no increase in total requirements. In fact, there's a decrease, right, Marianne? Because there is no concert required. Um, and there's not gonna be any increase in, in costs. In fact, many physicians are gonna receive a reimbursement because the board made this decision with a commitment that we would all pay during this transition the same thing, whether we were recertifying with concert and LLSAs, with concert and a combination of LLSAs and my EM cert four out of five, or my EM cert uh, totally. And so again, you can check on the ABEM website check ABEM Rex. It's on several different pages on the ABEM website. And this is a, a tool personalized to the year. There you go. There's a visual. Click right on that in the upper right-hand corner. And it, the visual allows you to then, it's very active, and you put in on the left side the year, um, the year your current cer certification ends. And this is critical. It's not the year that you completed all your requirements because since about 2013, we've been able to complete our requirements early. But remember that your, certific your certification um, is tied to the date on your certificate. So for example, this um, uh, person, this diplomat put in 20, I think 27, and you can see that on the right side, um, there is, um, it breaks down in, in the cycles. Um, historically and in the future, what you will need to do in order to maintain, to transition and maintain your certification. So as I mentioned, all current certification expiration dates remain the same. And for 85% of us, we're not gonna notice a big change in requirements every five years. For any currently held certificate, no physician will lose any time. You keep your certification as it is until your certification is expiring and then you transition into the My MyEmCert process. And for certificates issued in 2021, whether you choose to recertify using CONCERT or My MyEmCert, both will confer a five-year cycle going forward. I think we mentioned that there's not really going to be a change in the requirements or the costs. And this graphic kind of demonstrates that the annual costs of both certification cycles is the same, $280. As we move forward, LSAs will um, be free. There won't be a charge. And you can see how um, the fees in relationship to the upfront concert cost is listed here. So in both sets of cycles will continue to do four activities every five years. We'll continue to do part four of um, maintenance of certification, which is licensure and improvement in medical practice activities, attestations on the website. Um, and 
In, in the new five-year cycle, we will have consistent, pretty consistent year-to-year -year fees. So you're not having to pay that upfront 1950 uh, for your concert and then the um, annual uh, LLSA fee as well. You won't be going to a testing site. You'll be um, performing, achieving, finishing, um, studying through the MyMCERT um, platform at home. And of course, there will be no high stakes examination anymore. Some have asked us, why now? Why are we making these changes? And there are really multiple factors that have converged. One of the most important one, uh, I think the most important overall answer to the question is the, boards, the board really wanted to simplify change. We knew that we would be transitioning to my MSERT um, in the next few years. Um, Marianne, you want to talk about the... Um, the, the development cycle and when we were thinking that we'd be able to get my MSERT rolled out? Sure, Mary Nan. I think um, the, we are well in the development. We will have approximately five or six modules uh, by 2021, spring of 2021. So uh, right now we're piloting it to make sure everything uh, works the way we would like. And then in 2021, there would be enough for the 2021 certificate holders, I mean, enough modules available uh, for them uh, to transition to my insert if they did, uh, if they wanted to choose that pathway versus um, the at-home concert exam. So that is, that, that's where we're at. And then um, just one other point, uh, Mary Nan, that I think it's really important is that physicians really wanted to um, to recertify by my EM cert, and they said, "Well, if you're doing the pilot, why can't we do this in 2021?" Um, in order to do that, uh, we needed really to do the transition in 2021 to my EM cert as well as a five-year cycle uh, length simultaneously. And that uh, I, ju I just wanted to bring that up because I think that's an important point. And maybe you can ad address the ABMS vision. Yeah, so I agree, Marianne. There was a, a need to link uh, in order to simplify change the MyMCERT with the cycle length. The, the Vision Commission at the ABMS um, uh, really um, reported on, on, um, on the idea that the public uh, really thinks that um, more frequent, more frequent interaction with learning it would be beneficial to diplomates, and um, and 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 also so the cycle length probably needed to be shorter. I mean, I think those of us that are a little bit older on the call can remember that um, the continuing certification process has evolved right since we became a board. And it'll continue to evolve after those of us who are talking today are no longer associated with the board, and, and that um, and and that's just the truth based upon um, educational um, theory and uh, certification requirements, public um, publicly facing face validity. There's just a lot of uh, different issues that go into this idea of how frequent and how um, continuing is continuing uh, certification. The fee piece made sense uh, to also tie it together to simplify change. And at the end of the day, um, other specialties have been changing and adjusting their cycle lengths. And um, we anticipate that, there, that the ABMS may actually require uh, shorter cycle lengths for all specialties. But the board, when they um, read the Vision Commission and, and, and thought about it, uh, and receive signals from the ABMS about um, future potential requirements. We made a decision that in order to um, prevent our diplomates from having to rapidly cycle through um, some changes around continuing certification, we would just tie these changes all together and implement them at one time. And, and I can't emphasize enough that we did have quite a few requests um, to recertify with my MCERT in the 2021 cycle with the 2021 cadre, which is about 3,500 diplomates, you know, which is almost 10% of our diplomates. So we, we took that, those requests very seriously. Probably one of the uh, most frequent questions, now we're starting the FAQ session. 
some of the most frequent um, questions evolve around um, why doesn't taking concert um, itself guarantee 10 years of certification? And we know that we have about, uh, we know four or 500 diplomates who frequently take their concert before their certification year end date, which makes sense. But taking the concert early doesn't guarantee 10 years of certification. This was like a misconception and misassociation that some of us had. Taking concert early allows physicians to meet their part three requirement prior to the last year of certification by shifting the high stakes exam to a lower stakes exam. Because, you know, historically, if you if you took it um, in, in the last year of your certification cycle and you failed, then you would lose your certification. Of course, we did, the board did make an effort to mitigate this by offering it twice a year. But nonetheless, it, it was still a high stakes, it, it's still a high stakes exam. Um, and, and on top of that, in the past, taking concert early reset certification, um, your recertification anchor date, um, reducing prior certification period length. So if you took it early, you essentially only had eight years, not 10 years of certification. And in 2012, the board at that time again evolved uh, and, and said they would, they would not change the certification date based upon uh, if you took it early. Another common question is, doesn't MIAM cert give five years of certification and CONCERT give 10 years? So I think we talked about that a little bit earlier. No, the length of certification is really not based upon the pathway physicians take for recertification. The transition to the five-year certificate um, dependent on the end is dependent on the end date of your certificate, not when the requirements were completed. Certification link for all physicians whose certification expires in 2021 and beyond. That means your certificate has a date that says December 31, 2021, and thereafter will receive a five-year certificate, whether they um, choose to use the concert exam either in 2021 or 2022 to recertify or to enroll in the My MCERT process in 2021. It's a personal decision which way you want to go. So again, the certificate end date, not your pathway to cert recertification, determines the start of your certification cycle length. So inquiring minds may ask, how can two physicians pass the same exam and get different certification lengths? So if you were taking it early, you may have taken it at the same time as one of your peers who had a different certification end date. We all have obviously various um, expiration dates for our certificates. Um, the only thing that the two physicians have in common who took it at the same time is that they took the concert exam at the same time and they completed that part of their requirement. And remember, passing concert, even though it's such a big deal because it was, you know, has been so high stakes to us, we have tended to conflate that with um, actually our recertification. But remembering concert is only one of 12 requirements during the um, recertification cycle. And, um, and so this is an area that may seem unfair, but actually you're getting a benefit if you're taking it early, right? Because you were, you were really um, de-stressing yourself and moving a high stakes exam to a lower stakes exam. And the board has been generous in the last um, decade or so by offering that opportunity. Also remember that physicians will have paid different amounts to recertify and, um, and, and we have made efforts to um, mitigate that going forward during the transition. But those physicians who, are, who um, recertify with 2020 end dates actually have different costs. And the physicians will also have different LLSA requirements, that is eight LLSAs versus four LLSAs if their research uh, date is in 2020 or before or earlier. And so another common question was by going to a five-year certification, did ABIM increase requirements? And I think both the video and our previous conversation, Marianne, 
um, has emphasized that that's not the case. Um, do you want to um, go through the requirements again as we go forward? So um, for the tenure certification cycle, you complete eight LLCs in the concert exam. And then for five year, it's going to be four MyM cert modules every five years. And then you already talked about the improvement in practice and maintaining your medical license. So those are really the other parts of the continuing certification process. And so, so we're really over, decreasing it, right? Right. So what I was going to say, I think this is a message we want to put out to our positions because we really do want to simplify the requirements. We do want to make it more formative and allow for uh, translation of um, uh, kind of medical discoveries into practice. And we want to uh, play a role in that with you. So overall, there's a decrease in the number of activities uh, really by eliminating uh, the concert exam. And what we're hearing from um, those diplomates who are researching through the pilot um, it actually, the modules are very relevant and they're very appreciative of that. Exactly. Just, you know, common scenarios that you see, you know, somebody right up a quadrant pain and fever, you know, we, yeah. so and decreasing, we um, decreasing the number of activities, but also <laughs> increasing the value. That's our feedback so far, right? Exactly. Thanks. Next slide, yeah. If you have questions, you're always welcome, you know, and everyone has individualized questions. We understand that. ABEM has a very well um, educated, uh, informative, and, um, and service-oriented staff in um, certification services. And so these are ways that you could contact uh, the certification services staff directly at staycertified at abem.org. And you can also get to them um, by email through the website at www.abem.org backslash stay certified. Just one comment. Staff are really responsive. So, uh, you know, they know that this is a big transition for everyone. And so they're trying to, as quickly as possible, get your phone calls, get your emails and answer them. So I want to thank staff for doing that. It's uh, you will get a call back. You will get an email. Uh, somebody will respond to you, even though uh, a lot of the staff are working remotely um, or a hybrid model. But the bottom line is, is uh, we know you have questions and we're there to answer them. Thanks, Marianne. Sure. We're going to pivot to the moderated uh, part of the session now. Great, Mary Ann and Mary Nan, thank you. So the first question is, uh, after 30 years of certification, why can't I be grandfathered into my certification? Well, I'm almost to 30 years, Kathleen, but I'm not quite there yet. How about you, Mary Ann? I'm over 30. Okay, all right, all right. We're not gonna ask you how old you are. <laughs> but seriously, first, I wanna thank whoever asked that question. Uh, for the decades of commitment to the specialty, just like I, you know, I'm going to lean in and thank Marianne and others. Um, but importantly, certification is really based on meeting a standard that is consistently applied to everyone. It's not a merit-based system or a merit-based credential. We, um, as an organization, do honor our diplomates. Um, with 30 years of service um, and with a special certificate, which I think is, is a kind acknowledgement. Um, but again, the reality is that the requirements for ABIM certification are consistent and not age-based or merit-based in any way. I think we have done some studies also internally, haven't we, Marianne, about, um, about how our diplomates perform on concert as they um, move through their careers? Yeah, I think uh, it's a little more challenging uh, for the older um, physician. And I think uh, looking at, I guess it's over 20,000 uh, physicians who scored, uh, I think the concert is a little, little bit more challenging for them. So the MyIMSERT pathway allows for continuing certification for those uh, candidates. 
Thank you. So another question, if my certification expires in 2022 and I'm taking concert this November, will I need to recertify in 2027 or 2032? Okay, so if certification expires in 2022 and I'm taking concert this fall, will I then recertify in 2027 or 2032? Okay, so since your certification end date is after 2021, 2021 and after, you will be issued a five-year certificate after you meet all the requirements once your certification expires. So um, your next need to recertify will be in 2027 and that's by completing your requirements between 2023 and 2027. So remember whether you choose to recertify 2021 and beyond with either the CONCERT or the my MCERT, your cycle length will be the same. Taking CONCERT does not determine the length of your certificate. Another question, if my cert certificate end date is in 2028, do I still need to do LLSAs? Sure, so you will need to complete the four LLSAs that were um, tied to the first five years of your tenure certification. And if I'm in my first five years of the tenure certification cycle, can I do my MCERT instead of LLSAs? If you're in the first five years, yeah, you can do mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just jumped in. <laughs> no, I mean, that's great, yeah. So if I have a certificate that ends in 2023, is it better to take concert or my insert? What are the pros and cons? <laughs> well, that's dealer's choice, right, Marianne? Right. Um, it's an individual choice. We've alluded to that a little bit. You know, I've talked to some of my peers and they're like, you know what, I, it's the devil I know, the concert exam. You know, I like to study for it ahead of time. I take some time off work. I'm just going to do it. Um, you're going to need to weigh the pros and cons based on your own unique situation and your previous experiences. As I said, we got a lot of diplomat feedback that they really wanted to go ahead and move into my insert earlier, you know, in that 2020 um, year cadre. So I suspect that many, many of you will prefer to roll into my insert. But honestly, both are online and open book. And, and we've mentioned there's really no um, difference in total cost. Um, Marianne, do you want to just talk about the actual uh, differences in the exam itself, the exams themselves? Sure. The concert is about 190 questions. It has a pretty high pass rate generally in the 98% range. So people do pretty well with it. It's still the time exam, and so if people think if it's open book, then everybody's going to pass, but that that is not the circumstance, so um, it's probably uh, worth uh, studying a bit. The my insert is 50 questions per module, uh, and the passing score it needed is around 86%, and this is based on we uh, do standard setting with a panel of emergency physicians across the United States uh, that are not ABEM directors, but um, who uh, help us uh, set the standard. So if everybody meets that standard, everybody will pass. So that, that's the way that works. So it's 50 questions versus 190. So hope that helps, helps you decide what you need to do. So are the LLSAs going away? Well, eventually they'll go away. Um, the details of the phase out are really being discussed currently um, from the board's perspective. We expect that the phase out schedule will be announced uh, next year. Um, I do want to let you guys know that the 2022 LLSA reading list was recently posted. I mean, we're still moving forward with um, the LLSA pro process at this time. So if, uh, if, if you need to do um, your LLSA activities based upon um, checking in um, on your website on my, um, my RACs, we encourage you to, to do that um, before you do any more LLSAs because based upon your certification cycle, um, I mean, your certification end date, uh, you may have a different requirement than you, than you expected. 
Hey, I just want to, um, before we move to the next question, really emphasize that it's super important for everybody who's on just to check your requirements. I know uh, Mary Nan talked about that, and I just want to emphasize that a lot because uh, it's really nice to go on there and see what your choices are, like what, 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 what do you have to do and when do you have to do it by, and I think that's really helpful in decision making for each of you. When can I begin taking my MSERT modules? Uh, if I need to complete requirements by the end of 2021, is my MSERT still an option for me? Yes, absolutely. Um, my MSERT launch um, is an option for recertification for all diplomates in, in uh, 2021 with 2021 certificate end dates. Um, and it's available fully all the modules should be available um, next year, right, Marianne? Yeah, so we'll have uh, enough, you know, we'll have somewhere around five or six modules completed by spring of 2021. So you just would have to, the 2021 certificate holders would take four modules. So if you think about four modules, five years, I think that's really helpful and everybody has to complete the same number um, of modules during that five-year period, regardless of when your end date is. So, and then in, in 2022, we should have all eight modules available. And how do I prepare for my MSERT modules? Do you want me to take that? Sure, why don't you take that one, Marianne? <laughs> well, I, you know, on our site, we have the, the various uh, topic areas, which I think are really helpful. And it uh, also uh, goes through, you know, some of the uh, scenarios that you might need to, um, uh, to, or you might have questions on. And, you know, as an example, right upper quadrant pain or flank pain or, you know, a rash, you know, those kinds of things are, are listed for you. In addition, um, for the key advances, the synopses are available for you and, I mentioned uh, like the clinical policy alert one with the uh, seizures, the clinical policy that ASAP put out on, on seizure management. But there's other things such as our approach to uh, stroke, uh, oxygen use with acute MI and some others. And so there's a nice like one to two page synopsis with additional reading. And I think that would be really great to, uh, for you to, uh, before you start a module, to go through those and uh, look through the materials that we provide. In addition, I think working uh, with our EM professional organizations, membership organizations that are uh, developing, as an example, probably modular bla uh, based learning and those types of things. So we're excited to see what they can come up with, our stakeholders and all of this together uh, to help our uh, our emergency physicians across U.S. Uh, study for these, so uh, it will be a it will be a joint effort there. So great, and I do want to just emphasize a couple of things that during the exam, you we also encourage you to use resource materials from standard texts uh, or online reference materials such as up to date, and then also just highlighting um, what you said about the key advances that those um, synopses. Um, are actually available on the website, right? So even if you're not in the MyMCERT um, process yet and you want to see what those, you know, what those synopses are saying and, and keep up uh, with what we're talking about um, in terms of key advances, um, we encourage you to uh, search them out and review them. So do I have to do one MyMCERT module per year? Is this an annual requirement? Well, um, it's actually not an annual requirement. It's in the five-year certification cycle. You do need to take and pass four of the topic modules. You have choice as to which ones you want to choose. And, um, and we do, um, you do need to pass one set before you move on to the next one so you don't have multiple modules open and active and working through them at the same time. If for some reason you don't pass a module, say abdominal pelvic, you don't pass it the first time, there are two additional forms of that exam. And you, so you have essentially three, 
three chances to pass um, each module in that um, five-year cycle. Anything else on that, Marianne? No, that was perfect. So uh, can, does a my insert module need to be taken in one sitting or can it be paused and saved to be completed later? Uh, so you do need, um, you don't need to complete a module in one setting, in one sitting, in one setting, in one sitting. Um, you can pause the module between questions and then complete it at another time. Um, but you, as I mentioned earlier, you will need to complete the open module before you start a new module. And what happens if I fail a module? Well, I did mention that um, you'll have three attempts. So registering for a My Insert module allows you or affords you three attempts to take and pass that particular module. If your first attempt to pass is unsuccessful, you'll then be assigned to take a different version or form of that same modules exam. Three versions of each module will be available in every given year. So if you have not successfully completed a module after your third attempt, you'll need to wait until the following year for a new version to become available in that topic. Alternatively, you can select a new module in order to complete your research search the certification requirements. If you failed two attempts of a specific module, of course, we strongly encourage and recommend that you re review the learning materials on the topic prior to taking um, your third attempt. So I am registered for a concert this November, but I've decided I want to take the MyAmCert modules to recertify since my certificate ends after 2021. Can I switch over to the MyAmCert pathway? Go ahead, Marianne. Yeah, yeah, you definitely can. Uh, I would just uh, contact uh, ABAM, the certification specialist. They'll help you um, switch it over and uh, help you change your uh, registration. So it's 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 not a problem. You know, I, I think the goal here is to make this as flexible and easy as we can, but also to promote the learning. Uh, that is important for uh, continuing certification. So, you know, feel free to call ABEM staff. They're, they will help you do that. Do it in a timely way, and they'll get back to you. So what are the options for physicians who are maintaining a subspecialty certificate? Um, the, the physicians who hold subspecialty certification um, you know, have had many questions. ABIM's in conversation with key subspecialties like um, EMS and med talks. Um, there's also been keen interest on, uh, in those subboards about moving away from the high stakes exams um, for those two specialties at least. And both those subboards are having this uh, formal conversation uh, later this year. Um, of note, the MedTox exam this year is being administered in an online format. But I think the question that's really being asked is, um, will, will, um, will they go to a modular um, process similar to what ABIM is doing now, or will maintaining their subspecialty certification continue to, um, to continue to preserve their board certification status, et cetera, et cetera. And some of this depends upon um, how they decide to move forward with their continuing certification. More coming. As you know, all of us who practice emergency medicine encourage all of our subspecialty diplomates to, um, to maintain their primary emergency medicine board certification if they're routinely practicing emergency medicine as well as their sub. So, so for physicians who are maintaining more than one certificate, will any activities count for maintaining both? Well, we do try to accommodate physicians with multiple certificates uh, in order to reduce redundant requirements, and we systematically review and re-review these, uh, these issues. Um, however, the different combinations um, of certification are complex. You know, we have um, diplomates with multiple additional certifications, so I can't really just comment on directly on one. 
And so if, if you have questions about that, we again encourage you to call the ABM office um, or email search services to work through your specific situation. So going to a five-year certification and an annual fee seems like extortion. How much money is ABEM making off of this transition to a five-year certificate? So ABEM is, um, has really done a lot of accounting work, <laughs> um, both internally and externally. We've hired external uh, accounting help to, um, to make sure that each diplomate, each and every individual diplomate does not, is not financially disadvantaged um, whether they choose uh, to go in the next couple years through my MCERT or CONCERT as their recertification vehicle um, or uh, that they lose money um, based upon LLSAs that they may have completed that they don't need to complete going forward in the five-year cycle so that they're not financially disadvantaged. And in fact, um, the board has already posted about $10 million in credits and refunds to our diplomates um, based upon this transition. And so um, I think it's easy enough to see that the transition, particularly if you think back to that graph in the slide presentation that showed that the annualized fees um, for either the 10 or the five year cycle is about $280. So there's really no change there in terms of annualized fees. If you're, if you're a present value fan, uh, you know, in finance or economics, you can also understand that in fact, it disadvantages ABIM and advantages the diplomate by not having to pay um, the nearly $3,000 for the upfront cost for the concert. And it gives diplomates flexibility as far as how they pay for their certification and I mean, excuse me, their recertification going forward, particularly if you're at the um, if you're sundowning your career, um, you're not paying for a 10 year certificate when you're actually only going to um, practice for maybe five more years. I hope that helps. Why doesn't ABEM eliminate costly and onerous requirements that have never been shown to improve patient safety? <laughs> Go ahead, Mary Ann. <laughs> Well, it's a, it's a, really, it's a great question. It's really the activity that has created the greatest angst, I think, amongst uh, emergency physicians in the continuing certification process have been the concert exam. And uh, this is going away, so I think that's a, a, a good move. Uh, the other issue is in terms of uh, have they been shown to improve patient safety? And looking at uh, state medical board licensing data, um, ABIM found that physicians who lapse in certification had a threefold higher incidence of state uh, medical board disciplinary actions, uh, which at some level have a bearing on patient, uh, patient safety. So I think overall, you know, those who stay up to date and are going through the process and are motivated uh, to go through the continuing uh, certification process uh, are, are least likely to uh, undergo these disciplinary actions. And so therefore, uh, you know, the indirect is uh, public safety. So I am no longer in active clinical practice, but I wanna maintain certification. How do I complete uh, my improvement in medical practice requirements? Marianne, do you want to take that one too? Sure. If, if you're not actually seeing patients, if in a five-year time period you're seeing less than 20 patients or not seeing patients at all, um, then you will not have the improvement in medical practice requirement. All others will have it. Uh, those, uh, or your group practice, they do uh, quality metrics. I don't think you're going to have any problem um, meeting this requirement. Some of them are like the, uh, you know, the sepsis requirements that uh, CMS came out with. There was um, looking at bronchitis in adults and, and treatment of those. There, there's some common requirements. In addition, there's some other opportunities for you. And you can go to the ABEM website. I would just have you click on um, 
just put in uh, the IMP or improvement medical practice. And if you click on the FAQs, that really tells you everything. And there's links to uh, various uh, different improvement medical practice activities that your group probably already participates in. And if you don't, there's others through um, ASEP as an example, participation in CEDAR. Um, those kinds of things are something uh, that you can do as well. Is there any intent to offer CME for my MCERT modules? Go ahead, Marianne. I, I would, yes. Um, you know, similar to, to providing CME for other activities, but we'll need to uh, uh, partner with our EM organizations to, to do that. Um, and the answer is yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and finally, uh, uh, there are a number of questions from uh, physicians who want to know about their own circumstances related to um, how they, what they need to do to recertify. Can you just remind folks uh, where to uh, find out that information and uh, where they can reach out and email uh, with their own specific questions? Sure. So probably if, if you don't remember anything else that we've said today, that, I, that you um, write this down or remember this or use your QR uh, on your phone, what do I need to do to recertify? Specifically, the specific word here is I. What do I need to do? And we know that every diplomate is gonna wrestle with that um, question. So on the public ABEM website, again, you can click on in the upper right-hand corner, the check ABEM recs. Um, it's next to the ABIM portal sign-in. So you don't actually even have to sign in initially. This tool will help you understand the requirements based, again, on the end date of your certificate. If you prefer, you could also email staycertified at abim.org to learn more and to ask about your, sp your specific circumstances. Um, ABIM staff, as I mentioned earlier, are knowledgeable, uh, willing, and, and to kindly assist you um, in understanding your requirements. Well, Mary Nan, this has been great. Thanks uh, so much. I know there's going to be other questions coming, so feel free to email us. A number of us have called Diplomate, so thank you for joining. Thank you for joining in as well, Mary Ann, and thank you to staff for helping provide um, the support for this call and to all the Diplomates who uh, sent us questions ahead of time so that we could prepare some of the FAQs uh, on the slideshow ahead of time. Um, and again, thank you to all of our diplomates who every day are on the front lines, pandemic or not, taking care of patients um, and hopefully taking care of your colleagues. Be well and uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, one last thing, Mary Nan, a recording of this will be available soon on our website and with uh, frequently asked questions. So I think Thanks for reminding me about that because you probably <laughs> many of us have colleagues that couldn't turn, tune in today because they're working or sleeping. Yeah, thank you. Thanks, everyone. Stay bye -bye. well. Bye-bye.